today uh, we're going to tackle something that's kind of got us scratching our heads. Picture this. You're the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? You're sitting pretty at 6-2. and two. Russell right. Wilson is finally back. But uh, the wide receiver situation, yeah, not exactly looking like mm. a Super Bowl contender out there on the edges. So, so what's a team to do? That's what we're diving into today. We've got articles, fan theories, expert opinions, all trying to figure out how the Steelers can solve this wide receiver problem. So we'll be looking at some trade rumors, breaking down potential targets, and even looking ahead to that 2025 free agency craziness. You know, what's interesting here is that the Steelers decided to make this quarterback switch midseason, and they did it with a winning record. They benched Justin Fields, who was actually playing pretty well, to bring in the veteran Russell Wilson. That's not exactly a typical move. Yeah, no kidding. It definitely made a lot of people wonder what they're doing. Makes you think they're going for that win-now strategy, right? Banking on Wilson's experience for a playoff push. But even with Wilson back, the wide receiver issue is still a big one. Let's be real. The current group isn't exactly striking fear into opposing defenses. So naturally, the rumor mill is going crazy with potential trade targets. Names like Cooper Cup, Christian Kirk, Mike Williams have all been thrown around. But would any of them really be the right fit for the Steelers? Those are some big names for sure, but let's break it down. Cooper Cup, he's a Super Bowl MVP, amazing route runner, but the Rams don't seem like they want to let him go. And even if they were open to a trade, his price tag would be insane. Then there's Christian Kirk. He's known for his speed and agility. He'd definitely bring that explosiveness to the Steelers' offense. But unfortunately, he's got that shoulder injury. Makes him a pretty risky option right now. And then you've got Mike Williams. He's a physical receiver, great at contested catches. He would give the Steelers a serious red zone threat. But the Jets are holding on tight, and getting him would probably cost a fortune. So yeah, landing a big-name receiver through a trade seems unlikely. But maybe the answer isn't another huge move. We found this really interesting take from James Helton. He's a diehard Steelers fan who runs that Big Country 53 YouTube channel. He's been a fan since 1977. Now that's dedication. And his take is that the Steelers should focus on the offensive line, not adding another wide receiver. That's an interesting perspective. Sometimes the best moves aren't the splashy ones. A strong offensive line makes a huge difference for any quarterback, especially a veteran like Russell Wilson. It gives him more protection, opens up running lanes, gives him more time to find his targets. Exactly. But then again, a top-tier receiver could take Wilson's game to a whole other level life. It's a tough choice. What do you think? Would you focus on the O-line or go all-in on a receiver? Well, there are good arguments for both sides. Investing in the offensive line builds a solid foundation. It creates a stable platform for the whole offense. A dominant O-line helps every skill player, not just the quarterback. On the other hand, getting a true number one receiver could completely change the passing game and make the Steelers a way more explosive offense. Yeah, it's classic build from the ground up versus immediate impact. And while we're thinking about that, we can't ignore some other interesting trade possibilities. Former NFL quarterback and ESPN analyst Dan Orlovsky suggested the Steelers should target either Darius Slayton from the Giants or Adam Thielen from the Panthers. Now, those are some interesting options and maybe more realistic than those huge trades we talked about earlier. Let's start with Slayton. He's been a bright spot for the Giants, showing off his speed and route running. He's their second leading receiver, 32 receptions, 469 yards, and a touchdown. He's young, he's hungry, and he's shown that he can be a reliable target. Then you've got Adam Seelan, a veteran with a solid track record, although he has been dealing with that hamstring injury since week three. Before the injury, he was having a good season, averaging over 13 yards per catch. So we've got Slayton, a younger receiver who's on the rise, and Thielen, a seasoned vet who knows how to get to the end zone. But would either of them actually be a good fit for the Steelers? Oh. And how doable are these trades compared to those big-name scenarios? Well, Slayton's speed and ability to stretch the field would be a good addition to the Steelers' receiving group. He could open things up underneath for guys like Pat Fryermuth and George Pickens. Thielen, on the other hand, brings something different. He's a smart route runner, a red zone threat, and a proven leader. However, his age and the recent injury might make the Steelers hesitate. So they'd be getting different things from each player. Slayton brings that youth and big play potential, while Thielen brings experience and a proven track record, assuming he can bounce back from the injury. But here's the thing. These guys wouldn't cost nearly as much as a Cup or a Williams. The Steelers might actually be able to make one of these trades without destroying their salary cap. Speaking of the salary cap, there's another piece of this puzzle that we need to talk about. We did some digging and found out that the Steelers have a whopping 21 players hitting free agency next year. Wow, that's a lot. And it's going to force them to make some hard choices, especially with their current salary cap situation. They'll need to really look at their roster, figure out their core players, and 
make some smart moves to stay competitive now and in the future. Right. They're not exactly loaded with cap space. And get this, Justin Fields could be a free agent again. I mean, they just benched him for Wilson. What does that tell us about their long-term plans? It's definitely interesting. And it shows how complicated roster management is in the NFL. On one hand, they have Russell Wilson, who they clearly believe can lead them to a Super Bowl. On the other hand, they have Justin Fields, a young, talented quarterback who might do great with more experience and the right players around him. It's a tough decision. And the Steelers will need to think carefully about the pros and cons. It's like they're playing quarterback roulette. But it's not just Fields. There are other important names on that free agency list. Guys who have been key for the Steelers. Like Scotty Miller, Nate Herbig, Cameron Sutton, Jalen Warren, Yellendon Roberts, Michael Pruitt, Dante Jackson, Tyler Medikevich, and James Daniels. You're right. Those are key players at different positions. The Steelers are going to need to look at each player's performance potential and what they'll want in terms of salary, all while keeping in mind the team's needs and cap space. It'll be really interesting to see how they handle this in the offseason. It's... The Steelers' front office is playing a giant game of Tetris, right? Trying yeah. to fit all these pieces together. You've got the win-now thing with Wilson, the long-term potential of Fields, the need for a good wide receiver, and then that whole free agency craziness looming over everything. Yeah, they've got some tough choices ahead of them, that's for sure. And it all comes back to their strategy. Are they going all in for a Super Bowl run this year, or are they thinking more about the future? It really makes you think, if I was the Steelers' GM looking at this roster, what would my priority be? Would I be out there hunting for another receiver, trying to add some firepower? Or would I focus on building that offensive line to protect Russell Wilson? Or maybe I should be planning for those 2025 free agents trying to keep this team together. Those are the decisions that keep GMs up at night. There are no easy answers. Every choice has risks and rewards. What are you thinking after looking at all this? Honestly, I'm still stuck on that quarterback situation. You don't see a team bench a young quarterback like Justin Fields every day especially when he's winning games. Mm. And now they could lose him in free agency. That's a big gamble. It's definitely a bold move. It shows that the Steelers really believe in Russell Wilson. They're betting on his experience, his leadership, his ability to win those big games. But it's a risk for sure. What if Wilson gets hurt again? Or what if he just doesn't play as well as they expect? Then they've lost a potential franchise quarterback for nothing. That's the chance they're taking. But we can't forget that Fields is still young. He needs more experience, more development. Maybe the Steelers think that another year on the bench learning from Wilson could be good for him in the long run. So you're saying it might be worth the risk, sacrificing a year of Fields' development for a shot at a Super Bowl with Wilson. It's not a simple decision, but I can see why they're doing it. If they believe that Wilson gives them the best chance to win now and they're okay with betting on him, then letting Fields go might be a price they're willing to pay. Okay, I get that. But even with Wilson... They still need to do something about that wide receiver spot. Do you think they'll actually make a trade before the deadline? Hard to say. The Steelers are known for being aggressive, but they're also strategic. They won't make a move just to make a move. They'll look at everything carefully and only do a trade if it makes sense financially and strategically. Right. They're not going to panic and overpay for someone who doesn't fit. But let's say they do decide to trade. Do you think they'll go for a big name like Cooper Cup? or Mike Williams, or someone like Slayton, or Thielen? I think they'll look at everything, but I think they'll focus on value and fit. A big trade for a superstar would be exciting. But it could also hurt their cap space and limit their options later. And they got to think about the long game, not just a quick fix. Exactly. That's why I think Slayton or Thielen could be more likely. They're talented and could make an impact right away without costing a ton. Okay, so we've talked about the quarterbacks, the trades, and free agency, but... What about James Hilton's stake? He's really pushing for that offensive line. Mm, I think he makes a good point. A strong offensive line is the base of any good offense. It keeps the quarterback safe, opens up the run game, and gives receivers time to get open. It might not be as exciting as a new receiver, but it's probably more important in the long run. It's like they say, games are won and lost in the trenches. Exactly. And if the Steelers want to go deep in the playoffs, they need to be strong up front. A great offensive line can take a good offense to another level. Sounds like there's no easy answer here. A lot of tough choices with pros and cons for everything. That's what's so great about it, right? It's a real puzzle. The Steelers' front office has to weigh everything and make the best decision for now and the future. It's like chess, but with players' careers and the team's future on the line. Yeah, the stakes are high. That's what makes the NFL so exciting. Every move matters and the consequences can be huge. And for the Steelers, the consequences could be even bigger with all those players becoming free agents. 
It's going to be crazy watching how they handle all this in the offseason. I totally agree. They have some tough decisions to make. But I think they'll figure it out. They're a smart organization with a history of winning. They've been in tough spots before, and they always find a way. Well said. I'm sure our listeners are excited to see what happens. But before we wrap up, I want to go back to something you said about value and fit when making decisions. Oh, yeah. That's super important when you're building a winning team. You can't just get talent. You need to make sure it all works together. And that brings us back to the Steelers roster and what they need going into free agency. We've got a bunch of players who could be leaving, and some of them are really important. Let's take a closer look at some of those names and what they're leaving could mean for the Steelers. Okay, so let's pull up that depth chart and take a look at some of these guys who might be leaving. First up, we've got Scotty Miller, wide receiver, who's shown some potential but hasn't really broken out yet. Do you think the Steelers will try to keep him, or will they be looking for someone else? That's a tough one. Miller's got the speed, but he needs to be more consistent. You know, some drops, some mental mistakes. The Steelers have to decide if they think he can become a reliable player or if it's time to move on. And if they let him go, they'll have options in free agency and the draft. All right, so Miller's future is kind of up in the air. Let's switch gears and talk about Nate Herbig on the offensive line. He's been pretty solid, bringing some stability to that line. What do you think about his value to the team? Herbig's a reliable guy, a good presence on the O-line. You always need depth in the trenches, and he's shown he can play well when called upon. I think the Steelers would be smart to try and keep him. He's valuable, especially considering the age and injury history of some of their other linemen. Yeah, that makes sense. Having a guy like Herbig who can play multiple positions is huge. Now let's talk about Cameron Sutton at cornerback. He's been in steady presence in the secondary for a while now, just quietly doing his job and making plays. How big of a loss would it be if he left? Losing Sutton would definitely hurt. He's a smart player, always in the right spot. He may not be the flashiest corner, but he's reliable, and you need those guys. The Steelers would need to find someone to replace him, whether that's through free agency, the draft, or developing a younger player. You can't overstate how important experience and consistency are in the secondary. They're the last line of defense. Okay, let's move to the running backs and talk about Jalen Warren. He's been a great complement to Najee Harris. Do you think he could take on a bigger role? if Harris got injured or left. Warren is an exciting player with a lot of potential. He's shown explosiveness, vision, and the ability to make guys miss. He's a valuable asset for the Steelers, both as a backup and a potential starter. They should definitely keep him and see how he develops. Definitely a player to keep an eye on. Now let's head to the middle of the defense and talk about Elon and Roberts and Tyler Matakovic, the inside linebackers. They may not be superstars, but they bring that toughness and heart that every team needs. Roberts and Medikevich are those heart and soul players. Tough, physical, always around the ball. They may not be making highlight plays every week, but they hold the defense together. Losing both of them would really change the Steelers' defensive identity. You need those guys who are willing to do the dirty work. The unsung heroes who make everyone else's job easier. Okay, speaking of unsung heroes, we can't forget about Michael Pruitt at tight end. He's been solid both as a blocker and a receiver. Pruitt's a classic role player. Does all the little things right, reliable target for the quarterback, good blocker in the run game, positive presence in the locker room. He may not be a pro bowler, but he's a valuable piece of the team. He's the kind of guy you win with. Now let's talk about Dante Jackson at cornerback. He's got all the physical tools to be a shutdown corner, but he's also had some injury issues. What do you think about his potential? Jackson's a bit of a gamble. When he's healthy, he can be a lockdown corner, shutting down the best receivers in the league. But the problem is staying healthy. He's missed a lot of time with injuries. The Steelers need to decide if they're willing to take that risk, knowing he could be great if he stays on the field. It's a tough call. High risk, high reward. And finally, we've got James Daniels, the offensive guard. He's been steady on the line, providing consistency. What's your take on his value? Daniels is a solid, dependable player, the kind of guy you want holding down the offensive line. He may not be flashy, but he'll show up every day and do his job. The Steelers would be smart to triple keep him around. It's those consistent, reliable players who often make the biggest difference. But we can't end this discussion without talking about the big one. Justin Fields potentially becoming a free agent again. It's almost unheard of for a team to let a young quarterback with his talent walk away twice. It's definitely a decision that's got people talking. The Steelers clearly believe in Russell Wilson. And maybe they think Fields needs more time to develop, even if it means they could lose him later. It's a gamble for sure. It's a decision that could really change the future of the Steelers. If Wilson wins them a Super Bowl, it'll all be worth it. But if he struggles and Fields becomes a star somewhere else, 
the Steelers will be kicking themselves. That's just how it is in the NFL. Every decision has risks and rewards. And for the Steelers, this decision is one of the most interesting and important they'll make. Well, we've talked about a lot today. Trade rumors, fan perspectives, free agency. It's clear the Steelers have some tough decisions ahead. That's what makes following this team so interesting. It's a constant puzzle, a chess match with high stakes, and the Steelers, with their history and their smart front office, are always a team to watch. Absolutely. We've given you the information, the insights, and the different perspectives. Now it's up to you, our listeners, to decide what why you, you would do if you were running the Steelers. What would your top priority be? Another wide receiver, a stronger offensive line, planning for those 2025 free agents. There's no easy answer, and that's what makes this so interesting. Thanks for joining us. On this deep dive into the Steelers situation, we'll catch you next time.